So I have a question for you. Do you cherry pick certain definable career moments to market to prospective employers? Or do you view your entire career as this, you know, long, ever evolving marketable event? Well, we're going to just flush this out in this episode. So stick with us. Thanks. Hello, everybody. Jeff Mason, your host with Simple Biz 360 podcast. Simplebiz360.com is our home website, and uh, our book is on Amazon, Simple Biz 360, Timeless Business Tools. You can also buy it on our website, 1895. Uh, we're about to start taping an audiobook version of this uh, starting tomorrow, so we're real excited. Should have that, that done by sometime in the summer. Hey, Maddie Parker on the boards at Half Coast Studios here in St. Louis, Missouri. We, we've been doing this now since middle of October 2019, never missed a week. These guys have been with us since day one, uh, do a phenomenal job. Anybody looking to do a podcast in the St. Louis area, reach out to them. Half Coast Studios do a great job. Uh, you've heard Dietz, right? You heard Dietz all the time. Well, Dietz isn't with us uh, right today. He's off doing other stuff. So Maddie is our trusted uh, board man and doing a great job. So we're real excited about this today. And, you know, we really just want to... Um, uh, you know, pose the question is, uh, you know, is time clicking by so fast that you're not really um, absorbing the time that's clicking by? You know what I mean? You know, uh, in other words, are the days, the weeks and the months and the years just zooming by or are you looking and embracing your career as this ever changing, ever evolving um, you know, compilation of, of in instances and situations that, that make you a more marketable person in the future and give you and your family more uh, monetary value because you bring more to the table for prospective employers. So we're just going to kind of flush that out and talk about it. And again, Harold Janine, we mentioned him in the last episode, wrote a book called Managing. Uh, I read it in the, uh, I read it in the mid eighties and uh, gosh, what a great book. And, and Harold was the CEO of ITT Corporation for many years. Any rate, um, here's what he says about his career. Over the years, this attitude toward work as a creative experience became an ingrained way of thinking for me, and it served me well. I have always tried to find some way of doing things better than I had before, and over the years, it has given me an enthusiastic outlook on almost everything. So there's a lot packed into this statement, but basically, Harold Janine is saying, my career was a creative experience in process. So, and it gave me, uh, you know, gave me an enthusiastic outlook on things, but I was always trying to get better. And that is the message we've been trying to send since day one. It's the message in the book. It's what makes us tick. It, it's what got me into this um customer experience coaching and what's got me into this podcast is I want to do my part to help just uh, you experience the business world differently, have better results from your experiences and make customers happier because I believe happier customers lead to better business, um, you know, results that lead to better lives at home, to lead to better just quality of life in general. And it's fun. It's fun to put a smile on a customer's face. It really is. And it's fun to put a smile on your face when you can get a job that you didn't think you could. You know, I, I was in a situation once. I just, you know, I mean, it just happened overnight. But I, uh, I said to my employer, hey, I, I got this company talking to me and you know, I mean, it's a pretty serious talks. Hey, no, we don't want you to go anywhere. You know, next next day I had a $17,000 raise. I mean, a $17,000 raise, uh, it, that's nothing to sneeze at. Just overnight, just because I was talking to another company, I, I, I told them about that because I wanted to be open and integrity driven, but they valued the work I brought to the table. And what I'm trying to say is, you know, you can become more valuable at your home, to your family, uh, to the quality of life you bring if you look at your career as this creative experience. How do you 
you know, just get better one stair step at a time. So you keep climbing this improvement ladder. And this is really what Harold Janine is saying. And this is really what we're saying is, hey, every situation you're in, every opportunity in business that you've been part of, what are you taking away from it? What lessons learned are you packing in your suitcase and transferring to the next position within the company you're with or the next company that you're going to be part of? Can you put these things in transferable compartments, put them, zip the suitcase up and take them with you? Oh, I say absolutely, unequivocally, yes. So start looking at your career if you could in that way, that it's this compilation of skill sets and lessons learned and instances that if you're paying attention, if you're documenting them, if you're writing them down, if you're sending emails to yourself about them, you can take them with you and you can remember them more clearly. And that, that's how I got so much ammunition for my book is I spent decades doing just that. And you can see right here a site seller I have next to me. This is something that uh, I use you can see the thickness of it right here, but that is filled with examples that I've been through, that I've been part of, that I could take to a future employer and say, look, I'm going to open this book up and, and, and turn to page uh, 52 and show you that this was something I was, you know, I spearheaded and did and accomplished. It's right here. You can't call me a liar because I can prove it, right? I can evidence defeats disbelief, demonstrate, example, fact, um, exhibit, analogies, testimonies, startling statistics or statistics. They're there, right? But I can prove to it. And guess what? I want to compile these so I never forget what that project was in 1989 that I was part of, or 1993, or 1999, or 2007, or 2018, whatever it is. You know, so again, start putting these notebooks together. I say put them in paper form because you never know, you know, what could happen with a flash drive. Have them on there as well, but print them out. Have them in a book form. Make sure they're there. Make sure you can uh, scan a copy of something and send it to somebody if you lost your flash drive. But, you know, learn, um, learn from your, your situations and take it, transfer it in a way that can make you more money. Now, uh, um, when we're in bad situations, I say look even deeper for the lessons learned. I'm telling you, if you're in really rotten situations, if it is just a horrible environment, you can't wait to get out of this company, I urge you, write down what you're seeing, what, what's happening, take it with you, learn from it. I mean, I spent three years with a company, um, that uh, is an executive and, you know, I came away with a couple good things from that company. Um, but I mean, most of the things I took with me in that transferable suitcase were things I do not want to do. And I remember, I, I remember distinctly sitting there I was about four months into the company. It was a Saturday. I was in the conference room with the chairman of the board, with the CEO, and with the chief operating officer. And the chief operating officer and the chairman of the board are standing up. They're pointing at each other. They're screaming at each other, yelling at each other. The, the chief operating officer is just he's sweating profusely. He was a, almost bald, entirely bald. He's sweating profusely. I mean, they're screaming at each other. And I'm listening to this. And then, you know, the, the, the chief operating officer goes off into the men's room. And it's a Saturday, so no one's in the company. It's quiet. And, you know, what do we hear? We just hear this violent vomiting coming from the men's room. I mean, this guy's just, he's losing everything he's eaten for, you know, last day and a half. I mean, he's really, he's, he's, he's hurting. And I remember sitting there thinking, oh my gosh, God, first of all, you've got to have a sense of humor. Why am I in this position? Why am I, I mean, is this a dream or, or, or does somebody have it out for me? Is this, this, I mean, you can't make this stuff up. This is crazy. And, and it was, and this, this company was crazy. And, and, and I thought that was crazy. A week later, there was another instance that would happen that was crazier than that one. And it just went on and on and on and on. But I realized, I realized sitting there in that conference room, listening to this man vomit, I said, hey, you know what? There are tremendous lessons to be learned and to be 
put in my suitcase and zipped up and taken with me because I am going to learn what not to do at this company for the most part. And so, you know, don't discard those things. Um, you know, there's, there's great lessons there. So just, um, embrace it, embrace it, but embrace all of your business situations. This book, you know, I, I, I'm sure I, I self published. I'm sure a lot of people throw stones at it because it's, you know, it's not done by Paul. I had a chance to do it with the publisher and I said, no, I wanted to self publish. And, um, maybe, um, you know, maybe I'll lose some prestige because of that, but I, I use some empirical data as my, as my framework for this. But the rest of this book is situational observations. It's learning from being with 32 companies in nine different industries. It's sharing uh, the aptitude for listening and looking. If you just look at your surroundings and you listen, you pay attention, my gosh, you'll pick up so many things um, when you're in the middle of it. So just... Um, I urge you, write it down, save emails, send these emails to yourself, capture the moment, you know, understand the moment you're in and it will help you in your career and it will help you get better jobs, get better pay because you're bringing, you're bringing a better level of best practices to the next position you, um, hold or the next company you work for. So really encourage uh, you to do that. Thanks for sticking with us on this. And, um, I could talk about that company for, for, and I have talked about it for days on end. Cause I, I learned so much stuff on what not to do. It's crazy. At any rate, uh, we want to do a, a lost in the shuffle track today for you. Kind of a cool one. Um, if you think of Van Halen and you remember what David Lee Roth looked like in those tights and, you know, that kind of bare chest a lot and he had that raspy voice. Well, there was a guy who actually served as his visual inspiration for that. And a guy that was part of the Southern rock movement. Um, and it, it was with a band called Black Oak, Arkansas and Black Oak, Arkansas. They got their name from the fact that they were from Black Oak, Arkansas. And um, these guys were, you know, they, they, they did a pretty nice job for a number of years. They, were, they were up there doing some big, um, big concerts. And one of the most famous concerts they did was a California Jam, 1974, about 200,000 people. And uh, they did this, um, this tune called Jim Dandy to the Rescue live. And, uh, you know, he's waltzing around with no shirt on, so just be prepared, and, you know, some leather boots high up and white pair of pants, you know, with a, with a brown belt or something, you know, I mean, it's a typical look of that day for a rock performer. But, uh, you know, this song, um, actually, uh, the American R&B singer, uh, Laverne Baker made it popular in 1956. And it actually is one of the, it, I think, um, the rock and roll hall of fame, um, identified it as the, the number 354, uh, song out of 500 as being the number 355, four most important song in the rock and roll, um, genre and that it contributed to rock and roll. So this was something that, you know, Jim Danny to the rescue was a song that had been popular and, and it had, uh, had seen its, uh, seen its heyday with, uh, Laverne Baker. So enjoy this version of it. It's pretty spirited, pretty emblematic of that time period in life. And um, that was the year I went to my first concert as well. So enjoy Black Oak, Arkansas, Jim Dandy to the rescue. And guys, we say it all the time. If you want to improve your business, um, improve the how you do business. You want to improve your career. I say improve the how you go about, um, you know, capturing your career, how you go about um, documenting your career, how you go about transferring lessons learned um, over to the next position or next company. That's what I say. But, you know, nonetheless, you want to change the results, man, change the how you're doing business. And I think you'll see some much better results. And uh, we always say, you know, there's so many places to find information today. Be a keyboard digital warrior. Find it out on your own. You can. There's so many questions in life we're getting lied to from so many different angles. So many things are confusing, right? You just don't know what to make. Well, go out there and find it yourself. You listen to TV cable news, I say, eh. Scratch that, because what are you getting about 5% truth when you can go to citizen journalists, alternative news? You might have to, you know, you have to be discerning. You might get 60% truth, but it's way better than five. So go out, find it, 
Uh, be a truth teller. We need more truth coming up the chutes. We need more young kids going through the school systems and going through homeschooling, coming out of that process, being truth tellers. We need to tell them the truth in school. We need this thing to bubble up into companies and to politics of the future. We need more truth tellers, just bottom line. So uh, we encourage that. And guys, we just say, you know, the Bible, it is packed with great stories. If you've never read it, we encourage you to pick it up and read it. Um, I would start with John 3 if you want to start someplace. Try that. But uh, you'll love the stories. Um, We just ask you to... uh, you know, pray. This we need prayer warriors. Prayer helps. Prayer um, has been proven to to help those in need, and there's so many people in need right now. So, so keep this world in prayer and uh, against the uh, diabolical people that want to destroy this world. And uh, we say, you know, love the Lord God with all your heart, mind, and soul. And we will see you in 168 hours. <laughs>